Hi everyone, it's Lehman with Lace Covered Skies. Today I'm here to do another tutorial on how I did some of these tags in my last journal. The ones where I sewed on paper. So this is one that I did. And let me and it goes with the poem. Let me see where the other ones are. Here's another one. This is Jack and Jill. With a little bit of an embellishment and the picture that goes with the poem was in this pocket and I did a little bit of embellishing on there as well. And most of these are Mother Goose nursery rhymes, but I did do one that was from a children's textbook, and it is a poem as well. It has a lot of text, and on one of the strings, I attached a little tail with a butterfly. Sorry if the lighting is bad. So there you go. So what I usually do when I start these is I go through a book. I've been using Mother Goose a lot. And so I'll basically go through it and cut out the ones that I want. So as you can see, I've cut out a lot of them already, but there's just really pretty pictures here. And for the bigger pages, I'll make envelopes out of them. But let's say this would be a great one, if I can put it in frame. <laughs> um, this would be a great one, because it's, the poem is right there, and the picture is right here. So the picture is smaller than the poem itself. This would be great to put the picture in, to turn this part into a pocket and put the picture inside. So I'll cut out a bunch of them, and then I'll start picking threads. So let me show you the ones that I've cut out. Here we go. And I have zoomed my camera in super close. So I hope this works out okay. So for this one, I cut out this one. I'm going to sew under some of the words here and then I'll cut it apart and do something with it. Either back th these onto paper and put them on the same page, or I'll make a pocket out of something. But this is where I start. This is another one that I cut out. Here's the poem, and here is the picture. So they're really cute pictures, nice colors, which makes it fun when you start picking the threads. This is the picture for this one. The poem is called, Come, Let's to Bed and then I'll underline some of the words. Here's a little bit of a different shape. And then the picture is right there. And then these ones are cut separate from the picture already. So that's the poem that goes with this picture. And then this one. and so on. So these Mother Goose books are really good for doing this. This one and this one. So I think that I actually already poked the holes in these. So let me go ahead and cut another one out 
and then we'll use that one as an example. Okay, so I know you can't see the whole book, but I think the reason why I didn't cut a lot of these out were because they had full pictures on the back and I was going to use them as envelopes. Um, Nancy Dawson. That's the name. That's the name of this poem. And it's a full page. So, I think I will use this one to show you how I cut the holes. So, I'll go ahead and just take my box cutter and cut the pages out. Okay. All right. So the way I do this is I used to use a needle just to poke holes and that's what I did in my last journal and they turned out fine. They turned out perfectly fine so you could do that. You just kind of space space it out and poke the holes before you stitch. But what I'll show you how I do both. I'll show you both ways. I found this little tool at Tuesday morning. It was only maybe three bucks and it actually rolls through. There's points right here, little needles, and you roll through. So I'll show you how I do that first. So I'll go ahead and I'll read the poem. Nancy Dawson was so fine. So actually I always stitch under the title. So let me go ahead. What I have on here is foam core and it's great for doing this. So you could use a pokey tool. You could use a needle, which is what I did last time under a book. So let me go ahead and do her name like that. So I like using thimbles. I'm a big, well this isn't really a thimble. It's more like those little rubber fingers that people use to turn pages. My work uses this a lot. But what I do is I'll just poke hole through my own frame. Okay. I'll just start poking holes and I space them as evenly as I can. And I just keep going. like that. So I'll go through and I'll poke all my holes first. That's the first thing I do. And I'll show you how I use this tool right here. So I will basically pick the words that I want to emphasize with a thread. And it doesn't really matter what you underline. It's just kind of for looks. So what I do and this takes a little bit of practice. I'm going to say, I'm going to underline was so fine. And there's a little guide right here. And you kind of run it parallel along with the words. So basically, and then it punches the holes in like that. So that's. Those are two different ways you could you, you could you, do it. You could also use a pokey tool, anything like that. So now that that part's done, 
What I do next usually is I will, let's do this one. I will look at the colors and then I'll take out my embroidery floss. To me, this is the funnest part. And I will take out my embroidery floss, which this is, I have a wall full of this stuff, so I have a lot of this, and that's why I love doing this also. I get to use all these colors. And the colorful part is my favorite thing to think about while doing this. So I'm taking a look at my colors. Hmm. I don't want to make it too colorful. So I think I'm going to choose this ashy brown. And I, I think about the picture. And I'm going to do... For some reason, I want to do that color. And like a dusty rose. No, I don't like that. I kind of like these colors with this because I don't want to I want to keep it a little bit old I don't want to use a bright pink what if I add a yellow maybe if I make this a little bit more muted I don't know, I think I like that. Hmm. Okay, but you get the idea. You just kind of play around with it until you find a combination that you're happy with. And then I'll set it aside. So I'll kind of pick a few, a few sets of these out. And then I'll show you what I've picked so far. So I have this one. And the colors I had picked for that, for this one, were these. So I wanted it's kind of like a dark maroonish color to pick up this pink and then I added in the yellow and then I thought this went well with it and then some other ones I picked is this one which is the Dusty Miller and I chose these colors for it. I thought it went well. Even though it's not an exact match, I think I'm going to like that. And then I have this other poem called Hot Cross Buns. I think it's a song too. Children's song. But it's that one and I chose a couple of shades of brown with some yellow and blue. I thought that would go good. So I'll go ahead and start stitching one of these. Let me see how we're doing on time. We're at 14 minutes. Okay. Hopefully I can show you. Let me do... Sorry, I'm like picking and choosing. <laughs> Could have been more prepared. All right, I didn't underline Saturday, Sunday, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Hopefully I can do this straight on camera. And sometimes I do go crooked, but 
That's just how it goes with handmade, right? I don't really mind. Okay. So. I think I'm going to do Saturday and Sunday. Two different colors. So I'm going to do, this just popped into the frame and I really like this color too. I don't know. I think I like that better than this. Well, I like both of them. But I think I'm going to go with this. Alright, so let's start with this darker color. Actually, let me start with one where I don't have to unwind the threads. I usually use three strands. So that has two strands. I'm going to save it for something else. Okay, this has... <laughs> okay. Okay, let me just start off. And I probably won't do much of it. But I'll just start showing you how the stitching goes. And the good thing about this is it's paper, so I actually use tape. So let's start. I'm going to make Saturday green. So I will start from behind. My end frame. I'm going to start from behind and pull it through. And the nice thing is I just tape it down. So I go ahead and tape that down. And I'm going to go forward. And then I'm going to go to the next stitch and pull it through. And I'm going to back stitch it. I think this is called a back stitch. I'm going to go backwards to cover it. Then I'm going, to, I'm going to pass that hole that I just went into and go to the next hole and pull it through and then back stitch. So go backwards. So let's do that again. I'm going to pass this hole and go to the next hole. The next hole is right there. Go pull it through and go backwards to cover it in the front. I'm going to pass this hole and go to the next one. Go backwards to stitch it up so that you can see it from the front. I'm going to pass this hole and go to the next one from the back. And then go forward. Well, it's a back stitch, so I don't know why I'm saying going forward. I'm going to go past that hole from the back. If I could find the hole. <laughs> okay. See how I'm skipping that hole, but going to the last hole, pulling it through. And I lost my thread. Okay, I'm just gonna th re-thread my needle really quick. And then go through this hole to complete the stitch. Am I even in camera? Okay. <laughs> All right. So there. When you're not doing it on camera and trying to stay in frame, it goes a lot quicker. And it's actually really enjoyable but I underlined Saturday. And as you can see, it's a little bit crooked. I got some of the letters, but I'm fine with that because this is handmade. So Sunday, I'll do a different, different color, but because I went a little crooked, I'm just gonna make another dot 
another hole that kind of evens it out to have like a little upswing. But since I'm done with this, I go ahead and I tape it back up. And I really, I know this isn't professional, like a professional way to do it, but I really t love taping because I do some kinds of needlework, like a little bit of embroidery, some cross stitch, but my, and like crocheting, things like that. And my biggest thing that I don't like about it is finishing off stitches. So this is nice because you just kind of tape it up. So I'll go through and I'll do that with all the colors. I'm thinking I'll do yellow on this one because it'll kind of blend in with the green. But I'll continue doing it. And what I'll end up with, like I finished, I finished a few last night and they did not take long at all. But for example, I did this one, this one right here that goes with this picture. And another one I did was this one. This one I did a little bit more of uneven stitches. So what I typically do next is I will back it onto cardstock and then I'll back this onto cardstock. And then I'll just use it as an embellishment or a pocket or a journaling card, however I like. But that's how I do those. Um, let me know if you guys give this a try. It's a lot of fun for some reason. It's just really therapeutic to sew on paper. I love doing it. I'm gonna do a whole bunch right now. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you next time. Bye everyone.